Well, hello. My name is Dan Simpson. I am on Twitter at IDanSimpsonVO. Uh, I am the host here today of the hashtag VO podcast. Uh, we're going to be interviewing uh, Twitter's uh, hashtag VO community. Uh, I could stop saying hashtag the VO community, the voiceover <laughs> community on Twitter, um, uh, including voiceover artists and those who work with voiceover artists. Our first guest I am proud to announce is Ken <laughs> Therio. Yeah, raise that roof, Ken. Ken Therio. He is a voiceover actor as well as a an educator uh, who has um, been uh, uh, producing high quality articles that you can uh, use uh, yourself, as well as videos that you can use to uh, improve your pro uh, your your production quality uh, when you are recording your voiceovers and other audio at home. Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's my pleasure, Ken. Thank you again for being here. Um, let's go ahead and let's get into this. I just want to talk to you today about your, your voiceover career, um, uh, uh, how you got into it, what inspired you, uh, and, and some things that you learned along the way. The idea is that we want to teach people about how they can improve the, in their voiceover careers as well by learning from you. Sounds good, Ken? Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, I was, uh, I've been a musician for my whole life. So um, I, yeah, I, I think I might've forgotten to mention that little tidbit of news. Um, but uh, because of that, I've wanted to record um, myself and my music uh, ever since I was a teenager and had no idea. And then I was bouncing, you know, recording off of my brother's uh, a boom box. And I had like a dictaphone kind of thing and I was doing multi-track recording and it was God awful uh, quality. But, um, you know, as the years went by, I figured out how to make that better. Um, and uh, so anyway, I went through, I was actually in the Air Force uh, and and when I got out, my wife was like, you need to find, you know, you need to find a job. And uh, I I didn't want to have a job. Um, but uh, I thought, you know what? I don't know. I think I think I yelled down to her. What if I could be one of those guys that narrates audiobooks? Wouldn't that be cool? And she's like, "Yeah, quit dreaming and go look for a job." <laughs> um, but uh, I, I did actually sort of put some tendrils out, and I uh, I, I found out about Voices.com, and so I went and signed up with Voices.com. And I went through their little training thing. They have lots of, uh, of resources to teach uh, a new person how to get into doing voiceovers. And so I started answering auditions. And it wasn't more than a couple of weeks before um, I got one that said, I am looking specifically for a husband and wife team. My wife's a musician as well. We're both singers. Um, a husband and wife team who has their own studio at home. And, uh, you know, whatever after that. But uh, that was all I needed to say was, hey, that's us. <laughs> I have a wife. She has a voice. We have a studio. Um, and he says, uh, you've got the job. So <laughs> that was, uh, that was the, our first job. And it was an e-learning uh, type of a situation. And so we, we did it. And they loved it. And then we started doing, uh, doing work for them every month. And uh, so, you know, after that, I just start answering auditions all the time. And uh, one thing I have in one of my articles about becoming a voiceover person is that you really have to have a thick skin and you have to be very persistent. And I think the ratio is probably about one job per 100 auditions. So that's what I found it to be. I was talking to a a normal actor, a regular stage actor. Uh, and he said, yeah, that's about the same for regular <laughs> actors too. So i uh, got to be persistent. And if you have some expectations along those lines, um, I think you'll feel better about things when, you know, the, when you're not getting jobs, just know that you just have to do a lot of auditions and you'll learn about the process as you go. And then one other thing about this whole thing, how does it grow? How does it develop? is well there's there's marketing that you can do i'm terrible at it um but uh you you should uh you know follow the guidelines um with the resources that are out there voices.com is one but there are others but once you get a client that you really please that they, they're really happy with you 
more often than not, they're going to want to use you again and they'll go back to you. They won't even use voices.com anymore. Well, you can just go direct and you develop relationships with multiple clients. And it's great if they have a monthly thing or a, a quarterly thing, you just get, you just get regular work and you just start, uh, you know, uh, it, it becomes a full-time thing at that point. Very good. So you got started, you said um, you got started in a lot of your voiceover work on Voices.com. Is that right? That is correct. And is Voices.com, is that one of those pay to play sites? Um, well, it's, I don't know. When I hear pay to play, I think of musicians who have to pay clubs in order to play gigs there. That's no, that's no good. Um, what Voices.com is, is a, is a subscription service. So, okay. and what do you get with that subscription is you get access to, um, to the support that I said in the resources, but you get access to auditions, um, that, uh, you can see and, and, uh, and audition for these jobs every day. I get ooh, two dozen audition notices in my inbox daily. And so you have the ability then you're paying for access to the brokerage. Mm -hmm. and the service and then what happens when you are hired is that voices.com is the intermediary so they handle the money you go through and you tell the client what your quote is for their job and if they accept your proposal they go through the system there and there's an escrow service run by voices.com that takes the money and puts it and reserves it for you until the job is completed and then and then you get paid and so i wouldn't call that pay to play i would call that a service fee okay yeah it's like um it's like paying an agent up front to do their work does voices.com uh take a cut of any any money that you make after you you pay the subscription um I don't think so. I was going to say flatly no, but you know, whenever I say anything, absolutely. Uh, sometimes uh, someone will come out and say, oh, no, no, they do. But I am 99% sure they take nothing. They get their money from the, from the people who subscribe to their service. And that includes, they may, t they may take a cut of the people who are hiring, but it's been a long time since I hired anyone okay. to do voices. So I, Honestly, I don't remember, but I don't think so. Cool. I do appreciate uh, your perspective on that, and I'm definitely going to be looking into into that more in the future. Um, so just want to check back about homebrewaudio.com. How long have you been running that website, which you can find at homebrewaudio.com. Also, you could find on Twitter at homebrewaudio. How long have you been running that site, Ken? That started in 2008, believe it or not. Okay. Well. And it's it's... Is one of those things that I started not with the intention of making a whole lot of money necessarily. I just started it because I felt like I wanted to share all the stuff that I, that I learned because a lot of people seem to um, hear what I was doing and want to know about it. So I started the site and knew nothing about websites or about anything um, marketing or anything like that. So, um, so it's taken a while to blossom and get traction. But that's okay. Um, you know, if you're going to get into this game and and try to do voiceovers, you need to know you're going to be you're going to need to be in it for the long haul, mm -hmm. because you have to you have to build those client relationships. That takes time. That takes a lot of time because, like I said, if it's a hundred auditions and you do five a day, um, then you know obviously you don't have to do uh, too much heavy math there to know how often you're going to initially mm -hmm. get the jobs. It's, they're going to be slow in coming and you do a lot of work to get, to get even this, um, a, a small number of jobs to start. Um, but, uh, homebrew audio is the same way. It, um, you know, it was very slow and, uh, to, um, you know, to build up and to get traction. But now, gosh, every single day I'm getting comments on YouTube on the videos that are there. And I answer those, as soon as I see them, so it's very responsive. Um, any comments that people make on posts on Homebrew Audio, I also answer those as soon as I see them. And uh, 
So, um, you know, I try to be really responsive to people. But to answer your question, 2008 <laughs> is when I started. You do run a podcast uh, there as well. And there are, of course, hundreds, hundreds of articles. Uh, there are video tutorials um, and uh, obviously lots of gear suggestions, which are really appreciated, especially for those who are uh, just sort of breaking in to the voiceover world. Um, you've suggested using uh, Voices.com as a resource to help do that. And uh, uh, But um, obviously, th there's going to be tons of people. The voiceover world just seems to be really saturated right now. Um, and while there seems to be tons and tons of voice actors willing to do work, there, there almost seems to be more than enough jobs to, to fill them. Obviously, they're not all quality jobs. So what we're doing here is is we're trying to learn how to get to those to those quality jobs with those with those excellent clients who who you want to work hard for and uh, and 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 develop those relationships with and 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 hopefully turn those into uh, into repeat clients. I, obviously, that's that seems to be the uh, the the key to our success here as as, uh, as voice actors. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, for those who are just breaking in to the voiceover world, um, who maybe feel as though they don't have the equipment or, or know how to really get started, what do you have to say to these people, Ken? Well, if it's equipment, if the question is equipment, the very first reply that I would have is, is about budget. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that they need a minimum budget of hundreds or even thousands of dollars to get the gear that they need that's not true necessarily you can you can start um with with a very uh, inexpensive microphone um i actually have a, a thing on the home page of home pro audio that uh uh spoiler alert <laughs> like uh there are two audio samples one of them uses a five dollar mic chain or vocal chain as they're called it uses this um this is why you should not put soda uh, next to your studio that <laughs> it uses this which is essentially i think i paid six five five or six dollars for this plastic thing at at uh at target and it's plugged into the built-in sound card of this computer and um so i was recording some tutorials on how you can get started doing this for that small a budget and uh, a friend of mine said, hey, I just got this uh, really cool setup. Um, it uses something similar. This is the one I use now. This isn't the one he was using, but it's similar, this, this kind of an interface yeah. with, uh, with a microphone similar to this one. So his entire vocal chain costs about $500. Mine was about five. And his audio sucked. <laughs> it was just <laughs> awful. And, uh, and, you know, I know why. It's just that he was recording to distorting and he didn't know much about levels or anything like that. It was just a good object lesson that the cost of gear does not necessarily um, uh, relate to the quality of, of the audio. Mm -hmm. So my, I don't recommend you start with a $5 uh, microphone in order to make, it, to make your first uh, demos in the voiceover world. However, you can do pretty darn well um, with with a USB mic, but I'm not talking about the ones that look like headsets. Those typically don't good gear, uh, give gear, give very good results. But something like this, um, this is a uh, depends. The price seems to fluctuate. Uh, it goes from between thirty nine dollars to like uh, forty five or forty nine dollars. Anyway, it's under fifty bucks. And it's USB, so you don't need any separate other uh, hardware. Just plug it right into your computer. And I, if you can afford another 30, 40 bucks, I recommend a USB mic such as this. By the way, this here is a Samson Q1U microphone. I think you can still get them at Best Buy. This one is a Samson um, C01U. This is like a $75 mic. Again, I um, I think you can still get them at Best Buy, but of course you can mail order them through any uh, music store. Uh, USB mics give you the best bang for the buck. They're still not great, but they will get you in the ballpark. You can get jobs with USB mics. I would put one caveat on that, and that is to do noise reduction. All of these things, everyone I've tried, has it, there's a low-level hiss 
in the background. If you put headphones on, you can hear just a sort of a, a steady going on. That's fairly easy to get rid of, though. Um, and I have uh, an article with a video to um, on on the site, and it's on YouTube as well. But it uses uh, Reaper, and uh, that's the software I use to record. And there's a, um, a noise reduction uh, effect in there. It actually isn't called noise reduction. It's called uh, Reefer, R-E-A-F-I-R. Um, don't worry about what all that stands for, but... Um, if you look that up on YouTube or on uh, my site, you'll find step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to get rid of the hiss and leave the voice still sounding really good. So if you do that with a USB mic, barriers to entry can be under $100 for gear. If you can't afford it, though, I, I think you, you really, if you're going to invest in this, if you're going to be serious about it, I think you need to get yourself... A, an, an audio interface such this is a Focusrite 2i2 um, this is a two input one it's about 150 170 bucks you can get a one input version of this that they actually just came out with a couple of months ago for about a hundred bucks <laughs> and into that you plug a standard large diaphragm condenser mic such as the one I'm using here this is a Rode NT2A there are tons of these on the market for varying varying prices. They usually start at about a hundred dollars for the lower, the lesser ones, um, and then uh, I just filled out a, a forum this morning asking me what mic would you want to use if you could use any mic, and that one costs seven thousand um, dollars. Of course, I don't have that mic. <laughs> uh, this NT2A is a uh, is about a three hundred dollar microphone. Um, so, you know, anywhere in between there to start, I would say between $100 and $300 for the mic and between $100 and $150 for the interface. If you can afford that starting gear budget, do it because the quality is worth it. Mm -hmm. um, let's think a little bit here. I want to talk to you about about your voiceover career um, and how you started to gain a little bit of traction in your career. I know you said uh, it was sort of like building the website. It was it was sort of piece by piece and and uh, meeting those clients as you went. Um, mm -hmm. I also understand that you at uh, at some point along your career were the one who was hiring the voice talent, and you have a, uh, a particularly interesting interesting perspective uh, with that as well. I was wondering if maybe you could talk about that specifically, if you could uh, take the perspective of you as as hiring voice talent. And then thinking about the younger you, who was once the one uh, who was doing the auditioning, and 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 how those two ideas uh, uh, fit together. What lessons uh, would you have taught the younger Ken Thario? The, the new B Ken, the yes, the the fresh, do-eyed uh, voiceover person. Yeah, yeah boy. Oh. It was so funny when I didn't know anything. I got on a forum somewhere and a bunch of people just were like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know what? Don't listen to people trying to, trying to tell you what not to do. You're going to, you know, you get any group of people together and there's going to be people who try to um, discourage you or try to say you're doing it wrong. Um, I just say, don't listen to them, first of all. Uh, but if I were to be able to give myself some advice right at the get-go, it would be to, um, it, if you're going to answer an audition yeah. and the person who is uh, offering the job, the potential client, gives you a script or a sample script, often they will give you a sample of the script, a paragraph, and, uh, and they will say, this is what we're looking for. Or they will send you a link that says, we're looking for a voice that sounds like this. And it'll be a link to a video um, somewhere on the web. Go to it. Follow the link. Read the text they give you as your audition. This is called a custom audition. And it is a little bit more work. But boy, let me tell you, as the person on the hiring end, when I asked for something really specific, and I was... I was sourcing voices that were doing celebrity impersonations and they were very specific. Uh, I would say, look, I need it's, it was for a third party GPS voiceover uh, 
company. And I said, I need a voiceover that sounds like the drill sergeant from, uh, you know, Full Metal Jacket or something. So that's what I need. Give me drill sergeant. And I would get these demo reels that had cartoon voices, actors, they were five minutes long. You know, after a while, I'm like, I'm not listening to that. You know, I'd see a demo reel that looked like it was just somebody's just going through auditions and just sending generic demo reels. And after a while, I didn't even look at them. Um, and you can tell usually by the message that they send that it isn't a custom audition. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to listen because I don't have time. I have 30 uh, auditions to listen to and I need to get the job done. I don't have time to listen to generic uh, demo reels. So if you're thinking that you're just going to automate your process and answer 100 auditions a day by setting up some system that sends your demo reel, don't. Because if they're anything like me, and I'm a nice guy, uh, there are people out there who are who who are just like, uh, nope, 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 sorry, nope. Um, I'm not going to listen to it. So make a make a demo that matches what the client is looking for. Take the extra time to do that, and you will find your uh, your percentage of uh, positive feedback goes up, and you'll get the jobs um, uh, eventually. That that's pr that's my biggest piece of advice right there. I got so sick of listening to demo to demo reels. It just I I, re I just got angry. I'm like, didn't you even read my description of what I wanted? <laughs> this doesn't sound like you know. Well, I did Stewie Griffin, but <laughs> I did some of the voices. But the ones I couldn't do, um, I had to hire, and I got really tired of it. So um, so that's that's my, the biggest advice right there. And then there's a second piece to that. Okay. There's a very obvious distinction between somebody who isn't even trying to make the audio sound good and uh, and somebody who is. Now, I would say the price of admission is professional sounding audio. That should be the baseline. I should be listening to 30 or 40 professional sounding auditions and choosing from those. The ones that come in and they're, they're all hissy, um, they're all thin sounding, very poor quality audio, why, if you're serious about doing this, um, then you uh, you should be serious about the quality that you put out there. And it doesn't have to be expensive. That is what Homebrew Audio is all about. It's more about the uh, about how you do it, about what you do, learning a little bit about the recording process and about the editing process and how you treat that audio um, to to mold your finished product than it is about the gear. So I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy tons of gear. And I'm certainly not saying you have to go to a recording studio because that can get really expensive really fast. Um, so what, but what I am saying is learn a little bit about the recording process in order to produce a good sounding audio and then do a custom audition and your uh, your odds will go up. And there's actually, I said there was one more. There's actually three pieces. I, I, I forgot about this one. Three pronged. I like the three uh, That's right. Three pronged attack. Uh, <laughs> If you are on, if you're using Voices.com to do this, or, or any of the other, there there are several other brokerage type services. Um, look at the number of auditions that have already been submitted. If you look at something and and you think, oh, hey, I'd like to audition for that, but there's already 65 people who have auditioned before you, I would say pass that one by. If you see something pop up in your email and it says there's an audition for this, there's a 100% voice match for your profile, and you go to it, and uh, I made a, a just a gen general um, random number of, of 50 is the max. If, um, if there are 50 or more people have already auditioned, I won't bother. So um, I think that will also increase your odds of getting the job. Very good. Because so again, I, I don't have time to listen to 50 auditions. <laughs> That's a good point. Cool. So lots of really good advice. I want to take a step back because we were talking about sort of the low end of just buying a couple of different things to uh, uh, learn some uh, voiceover fundamentals and give you the tools to do that. And you said mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, maybe a couple hundred dollars is, is, is a great uh, ballpark right there. So that's sort of uh, maybe the break in level. Uh, would you talk about maybe uh, what, 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 what maybe you would suggest for someone who's uh, uh, perhaps ready to spend a little bit more than that? They've... Uh, 
uh, perhaps had some of those things for a little bit a little bit of time and, and they're thinking about maybe maybe buying a booth or 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 building a booth on uh, on their own what, what would you talk about uh, to these types of folks well yeah um, I'm glad you mentioned the the booth there's a lot of information out there about soundproofing or about treating your room for for sound there's really two issues there one of them is the the freaking leaf blowers and the lawn mowers that are outside your window. Uh, if you do have a vocal booth, um, then that's then you don't have to worry about that. Then that's terrific. They're super expensive though. Um, you can build your own, but I caution you that uh, the acoustics um, for homemade vocal booths are really bad unless you know what you're doing. So either hire somebody who knows what they're doing or do your research because I didn't know when I first. Uh, um, when we first bought this house several years ago, there's a fairly large closet right there. And I figured, hey, that could be my vocal booth. And the and the sound quality is horrific in there. Um, so I hung up a bunch of blankets and, and things, and that didn't really help all that much. So you got to understand a little bit about what uh, what your room is doing to your sound and whether or not you can soundproof it. I have not bothered with a vocal booth. But um, but then again, this you know most converted bedrooms give you really awful sound as far as the room sound. And I have a series of six tips on um, on the site. If you just go to to the homepage and you just put tip in there, it will uh, it will bring up a drop down of all the tips to get the best quality audio without having to build or buy anything. And uh, and there are several tips in there that will help you regardless of what mic you're using. And then the sixth one actually is um, this acoustic foam that um, that I you can read about it on the site. But uh, there are some audio samples on there of what it sounded like. I did a whole bunch of before and afters with the bare walls, and then when the foam was up. And what that does is it really absorbs and it makes it sound less echoey uh, and reverby in the room, mm -hmm. which is which is really really helpful. Um, and um, now I'm rambling. I have act actually forgotten your question. What was the next? Oh, the vocal booth and going beyond. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about um, next level things for people. Yeah, next level thing is if you if you can afford the thousand dollars plus to get one of those vocal booths, and you know you know without a doubt this is going to be your career from now on. Um, yeah, uh, invest, you know, um, in one of those because there are several pre-made ones on the market. If you have the space, um, those are, those are going to be great. If you want to build your own, there are plans on the web. I, like I said, I don't go that route. I treated my room and that, that can cost, um, mm -hmm. these particular foam panels here are specifically geared toward the voice. I did one of these, uh, where I was the interviewer and the guy being interviewed was the guy who invented these. Um, and that's on the that's one of the videos uh, on the site as well. But um, yeah, that's a I think altogether I spent about a thousand dollars on on just the, those foam panels around the room. Okay. And what that helps do, uh, what that does is it knocks down all of the awful reverb in the room, and it helps a, a heck of a lot with uh, with imaging when you're listening back and forth, uh, etc. Um, also. Different mics. I, I was going back and forth with somebody today, chatting uh, based on your on your tweets that you put for for this uh, particular podcast. And let me see what uh, who that was because she was funny. Um, and then she said, "Look, I'm doing a terrible script right now. I'll get back with you later." <laughs> oh heck, I don't remember her name now. I don't want to waste the time to doing it. But anyway, she. Uh, she she said, "Hey, I have two different mics. One of them is uh, the little brother to this one, the Rode NT1A that she said she likes for for um, a little bit of a clear, cri uh, crisper sound when she's narr narrating audiobooks. And then she has another one that uh, I had never I had never heard of. It's it's another large diaphragm condenser mic. Um, and now again, I can't remember what it was because I'd never heard of it before. It's not a standard thing. But she said she loves that for a more rounded tone." Um, hmm. so when you get, when you start getting a little bit more, um, that you can afford to put into your business, mm -hmm. trying different microphones, yeah. um, is, is a great way to, to, uh, to spend that money. Um, also if you can, uh, invest in, you know, Reaper is what I use, uh, 
this it's not expensive um reaper is a very affordable software it's uh, and it's got this weird thing where if you pay you can buy it for well you don't have to to buy it at all at first they have a um uh, a trial version but it never expires it's supposed to be 60 days and they'll send in and if you use it after 60 days it'll send you little pop-ups this is not for you software but it never stops working it's like when's it's it? based totally on the honor system and then they expect you to pay 65 bucks for a personal license and if you start to make uh they say they'll cut off as like twenty thousand dollars a year then you pay for the commercial license which is like 225 dollars but it's the same software okay. it's all based on the honor system um so uh anyway software i also use a different kind of software called uh, editing program it's a separate program reaper is great for um for recording and if you're mixing in uh, conversations or background music the multi-track functionality is superb oh, cool. and um, and i've recorded several albums using nothing but reaper it's great but to, to put the final polish on all of my voiceover jobs i use adobe audition which is, oof, what is it now? I don't even know. I'm still using an older version that cost about $300. 16 bucks, 16 bucks a month. Um, or if you do Adobe Audition on the Creative Cloud, um, yeah. you, can, you can add it to your, your uh, subscription there. Um, but the Adobe Audition does, does some great things that I like. Um, but you don't, you don't really need to have that separate editing um, audio software at first. Um, later on, when if you if you want, um, you, there are some cool things you can do with it. Um, mostly in uh, in terms of enhancing the the vocal, um, different compression, different uh, noise reduction. In case you have some noise, if you're doing a conversation where you had to record it, say out in a mall or something where there was all kinds of background noise and everything else, um, I think that uh, something like Adobe Audition or SoundForge or or one of those will will help you out to clean up audio that might be noisy or what have you but so software if you have a little bit more money and budget and you want to grow your uh your business um and uh different microphones and you know the different microphone and uh interface combinations can give you um different different results try a tube microphone those are fairly expensive try a neumann microphone <laughs> I I roll my eyes because that's like uh, the pinnacle of of microphone companies is Neumann. You know the U eighty seven is three thousand okay. dollars. Um, so there's plenty of money to to spend if you have the budget for it in this business. But my big uh, my big lesson is you don't need to spend that money if you don't have it. Um, Ken, I I appreciate you so much. You, you you're just the perfect. Uh, Yay. Perfect person to have uh, here for the first the first interview for the VO podcast. You got a lot of 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 wonderful wonderful things to share with us, um, and I'm going to take a lot of these things that you just shared with us, and I'm going to turn them into hashtag VO tips, and we're going to go ahead and share them uh, through our Twitter, and that will link back uh, to uh, uh, to my blog, which will have your information, uh, which how how we can get a hold of Ken. Uh, let's just go ahead and talk about a couple of those things again. You can get Ken on Twitter at Homebrew Audio as well as at Ken Therio. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to open up this invite here. You can also find Ken on the web at www.homebrewaudio.com. His music website is www.ravenboyvoicetalent.com. His vo uh, you can find his VO demos at voices.com slash people slash Ken Therio. And if you want to contact Ken directly for booking, you could do that at Ken at Ken .com. And his personal email is Ken at homebrewaudio.com. Um, I, yeah, I, I can't, I, I can't thank you enough for being here, Ken. I want to go ahead and just take a couple minutes and, and wrap up. Um, is there anything else that's on your mind? I, I can't, I, I can't begin to th thank you for, thank you enough for, for sharing all those wonderful tips. And you really, you're just, you're, you're all over the place, um, in terms of, uh, 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 help and, and in, in terms of being a resource, uh, for voice actors. Um, so I definitely suggest all voice actors check out his homebrewaudio.com. Um, so you talked about giving some advice, Ken, to, uh, perhaps a younger you or, or those breaking in, into the, uh, to, to the VO community. Um, 
what what is the piece of advice that you recently learned you're obviously on a level where you have your experience uh, you've learned a lot along the way um, but it seems as though you, you haven't stopped learning um, what, what's something that you've you've learned recently that you wouldn't mind sharing um well first let me correct the the music thing I um, is actually ravenboymusic.com um, and uh, and Raven Boy Voice Talent is the um, is the voiceover place that that I don't update very often. But uh, <laughs> um, the lesson, the la okay. the latest lesson is yeah. life is too short to work with bad clients, and they will take advantage of you if mm -hmm. you let them. And uh, unfortunately, you know this is a lesson that a lot of people have to learn. When you're first starting out, you get your first job. <gasps> I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid to uh, to 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 use my microphone, and I can work at home, and this is awesome. And it is. I am not gonna say it isn't. Um, you will be tempted to charge less money than you should, and um, I, I I don't have there there aren't any really good. I, I used to go by the guideline I heard first, which is five hundred dollars per finished hour of audio so that's like if they want one hour of audio then they pay five hundred dollars i've been using that as a guide um you're gonna have to figure something out for yourself because of course there's a trade-off between if you charge too much um, you won't get hired as often if you charge too little you'll get hired a lot more often but then you'll get abused more people will be like, oh i don't like the pronunciation of this can you change it again okay mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Can you change this? Well, how come you didn't tell me about that in the initial script? Oh, I changed my mind. And you get you get to do in um, two weeks work a worth of work for two hundred dollars. And it's not hard to to see that you're never going to make a living doing that. Hmm. So um, voices dot com. I keep going back to that. I, I have no affiliation with them. I really do not. Um, I just they helped me so much at the beginning. They had all the resources I needed. They have so many free things that you can download. They have free uh, generic scripts, and um, and they they show you how to do some basic marketing and how to put up a demo and how to set up your own profile on their site and how to how to do almost everything. They're terrific. Um, they also have a pricing guide, and I would recommend to people to resist the urge to lowball just so you can get the job mm -hmm. um, because this is your life we're talking about this is your living and people will try to um, to get what they can uh, for the price that they can get it for that's just human nature people aren't bad um, it's just that you know if they can get the same work for uh, for a hundred dollars that they can get for five hundred dollars why wouldn't they so um, keep that in mind um, protect yourself you're you're giving something of value and uh and don't devalue what you are providing and uh and you know what whatever you end up charging just make sure that it's fair and uh and that it's what you're worth and um, that's that's probably the best advice uh, i've learned lately <laughs> that's some great stuff i think there's, there's about 20 hashtag VO tips just waiting in those uh, those last few sentences that you shared. So I appreciate that again. Um, Ken, I think this is just a, a, a wonderful uh, chance for uh, people of, uh, of all levels in the VO community to, uh, to learn a, a little bit more about uh, how to improve their craft. Uh, again, please check out Ken Therio's work at homebrewaudio.com uh, to, uh, to, to pick up on some tips. There's literally literally hundreds hundreds of articles uh, for you to peruse um, and um, I, I, I like the one thing that it says on his website it says off to the side and uh, uh, it says something to the effect of try one of these things try one of these things the next time that you record and you'll find that your recordings are better um, and uh, and I think in the spirit of uh, of of being a, a VO artist which I think is is the same spirit of being a hustler i think you gotta you gotta realize that there's so many other people out there willing to work hard and to some extent you got to work harder than them uh so i i, I feel like um it's been a pleasure ken thank you so much uh for being thank here thank you um anything uh you, anything else you'd like to say to your fans 
You know, I hate I hate to just keep piling on, but one other thing just did occur Please. to me. <laughs> yes. Because um you said there are hundreds of other people out there doing doing work and you have to maybe work harder than they are. There is another aspect to all of this. Uh, don't there aren't very many people doing movie movie uh uh voiceovers. Those those trailers you hear on TV, there's there's very few people working getting paid to do that. Don't think you're going to do that. Um, don't think you're going to get on the radio or on TV, at least not right away. But there are tons of jobs in the e-learning world, in the internet marketing world, that doing voiceovers for videos that people are doing in internet marketing. Um, those are not sexy, but they pay. And so I would, I would just throw that out there as a last thing. So uh, managed expectations is, yes. is uh, what we're calling for. Wonderful. Well, um, I, yeah, again, I, I, wonderful tips, Ken, all the way from uh, beginning voiceover artists uh, trying to g break into the field uh, to uh, perhaps uh, more advanced artists thinking about expanding on their home production as well as uh, uh, just wonderful uh, uh, tips for, for being a, a freelancer and, and running a, an honest business that, that pays the bills and allows you to feel, feel good about yourself at the end of the day. Ken, uh, thank you once again uh, for being here. Um, we're you. looking forward to seeing you online again at Twitter uh, and, uh, and, and through homebrewaudio.com. Thank you, Ken. Thank you.